Uh, good morning. I'd like to welcome members to the fifth meeting of 2018 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. Our first uh, item today is for the committee to agree to take agenda item four in private. This is a letter we've received from James Dornan, MSP. Uh, do members agree to take this item in private? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item two is for the committee to take evidence on the proposed cross-party group on tackling Islamophobia. I'd like to welcome Anis Sarwar, MSP, to the meeting. Anis is the convener <coughs> of the proposed group, and I'd like to invite him to make a statement. Thank you, Chair, and th thank you for your time this morning. Um, I, I think anyone that has seen uh, the, the media, in particular the last few weeks, around Islamophobia and, and challenges towards not just Muslims uh, here in Scotland and across the UK, but indeed across the world, will recognise that there is a growing challenge with Islamophobia, how it impacts on communities and the impact it has directly on particularly women. And I'll come, I'll say to that more in a moment. Um, and what we're trying to do is to get some recognition, uh, firstly, that Islamophobia exists, and then secondly, bringing together all those people that are doing work in their individual silos right across Scotland, uh, around the table in one place, namely in the Parliament, but also as an opportunity to educate our parliamentarians about what more we can do to challenge Islamophobia head on. Uh, and what we're looking to do with the group is to, is to look at certain areas. So one, uh, I've mentioned uh, gender. There's a clear gendered nature to Islamophobia. So if you look at Islamophobic hate crimes, um, if you look at racist hate crimes, you're almost twice as likely to be the victim of that if you are a woman rather than if you are a man. And more often than not, the perpetrator of the incident is usually a man. So there is there's clearly a gender nature to um, to Islamophobia and to racism, and that's one element one to have a direct look at. Um, secondly, it's what framework we have as a legal framework. Is there are there gaps in the law? Is there more that we can do from from this place to to challenge uh, Islamophobia? Um, we're going to look at that in, in much more detail, and we're doing that in partnership with the Equalities and Human Rights Commission. Um, also, Police Scotland. What role does Police Scotland have to play uh, around reporting, around recording, around the barriers to recording, around how cases are dealt with? Yeah, and then after that, subsequently, um, what role the Crown Office plays in terms of successful prosecutions and the kind of um, sentences that is going down for people that are um, the perpetrators of Islamophobic hate crimes. But the key point I think that, that's worth emphasising is the vast, vast, vast majority of Islamophobia and racism is not criminal in nature. It's not something someone can report to the police. Um, it's not something that can have a successful prosecution, but it still impacts on life chances, life opportunities and life outcomes. And it's that part that in particular I think the CPG wants to explore around employability, around the education system, uh, around access to public services. Uh, all those are issues that we, we're going to look at in more detail. And the final stream um, that I think we want to look at is when you ask young Muslims in particular, what do they, what do they think is the reason for the rise in Islamophobia? The first answer is always the media, and the second answer is politicians. Um, so we want to do some work around media monitoring the responsibility of, of media in terms of the language they use and, and how they interact with individual communities. And then secondly, how we better educate our politicians as well, myself included, about the language we use uh, and how we can, we can recognise the actions that we take uh, can have an impact on, on communities on the, on the ground. Uh, these are all areas we want to explore in much more detail. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you for that, Mr. Sarwar. Um, do the committee have any questions? Um, Alexander? Thank you, Convener. Good morning, Alex. There's obviously some common themes and some common issues that you've identified. Uh, there are also other cross-party groups that may have an input into what you're trying to examine as well. Uh, how are you planning to work alongside them to develop some of these common themes uh, and take that forward? So, uh, um, Fulton McGregor chairs the cross-party group on uh, race equality. Um, which I'm a vice convener of. So um, Fulton was at the, the first meeting of the CPG when we set it up. Uh, and there are areas that we we're going to look at together, particularly around the legal framework, because <coughs> I think there's a common interest there around, around race and around uh, religion and faith, um, the, around reporting and, and how the police cooperate. So that we've, we've agreed already, myself and Fulton, that there'll be certain meetings um, that we'll try and do together. I've also had conversations um, with people that are serve on the... Um, one around religious freedom. I think there's some issues around religious freedom which would be worth um, having more conversations around. And then there's obviously the cross-party group that deals with uh, anti-Semitism as well. I think Adam Tompkins is the chair of that, so there's already been some conversations around um, some of the work that the Jewish community really successfully did in terms of getting access to, to decision-makers, uh, particularly in the criminal justice system, and how we can replicate some of that with the cross-party group in tackling Islamophobia. Thank you. Kate? Following on from that, in terms of the specifics for how, 
you know, the impact you see your cross-party group having um, on S Scotland generally and uh, working with other cross-party groups, what would you like to be the objective? I mean, what, what's the, the objective? The biggest challenge has been, I, th I think at times we have a Scottish exceptionalism, an idea that bad things happen elsewhere, but bad things don't happen here. And I think, one, having a recognition that Islamophobia exists in Scotland, just the same way that sexism, homophobia, anti-Semitism and racism exist, I think is an important part of that. Um, secondly, is trying to define what Islamophobia is. I think there's a very loose definition that people have uh, in their heads, but there's probably not a, a set definition in, in law uh, about what Islamophobia is. I think that's uh, an important piece uh, of work that needs to happen. And then third is to try and educate communities. It's, tr it's trying to bring people together. So I, I've been struck by how... how how much people have been willing to engage with the cross-party group. So when, when I first put it together, I thought we're going to struggle to fit people in, in a room, you know, but we had, um, you know, 162 individuals express an interest um, to take part in the uh, CPG. I think we have over 50 or 60 members of the CPG already in terms of organisations, uh, as well as MSPs. It's already got a, a, a mailing distribution list of well over 300 uh, people and organisations. So I think, I think there is genuine scope and interest from the public um, and what I've been very clear about is I, I don't want it to become just a, a talking shop because that's an actual fact that's the easy thing to do. Let's get people in the room uh, and as a Muslim myself, get lots of Muslims in the room, we'll all end up fighting with each other. Um, so we, we've, we've got to get people in the room and talking about actions um, and that's that's one of the key themes. So the first uh, meeting we're hoping to have if, if the CPG is approved is, for example, with the Equalities and Human Rights Commission who will do a presentation on the legal framework. There are then people who have suggested what um, certain amendments could be to the existing legal framework, so we look at actions that come from that. Uh, and then Police Scotland are, are coming to do a presentation also around hate crime statistics, how they do, how they case handle, um, what, what they think the barriers to, to reporting are, and then how we can build up a relationship and a dialogue with, with third-party reporting, for example, being one thing that's been suggested, um, and also how we publish those statistics to try and get that debate and, and conversation going. So. One is having the conversation and the recognition, but secondly, I think the most important part is what are the actions that we need to take? Small, practical actions, but hopefully can have bigger impact in the longer term. Jamie. Morning, Alice. Um, Morning. I just wanted to ask, you've obviously got some universities listed here, um, but I imagine they're, they're involved from the kind of academic point of view largely. I was just wondering how you were going to um, uh, engage or include kind of engagement and uh, communication um, both ways with colleges, schools, universities, particularly the students who have kind of practical experience of what's going on there. Are you looking at getting them involved or education unions? Uh, absolutely. So I'm delighted that Peter Hopkins, Professor Peter Hopkins, has agreed to be the, the secretary of the CPG. Uh, Professor Hopkins has done uh, research, although he's, he works at Newcastle University, he's actually uh, from, from Glasgow and, and commutes back and forth um, and has done research for 10 years in Scotland around Islamophobia. Um, and one of his great frustrations is he's done lots of research, but very little people, myself included, have done very little with the research and the findings that he's he's had. So I think there's definitely scope for for more research and collaboration with uh, with professors, not just in Scotland but but across the UK. Uh, we've also set up uh, with uh, Professor uh, Hawkins taking the lead on this uh, a, an education working group, uh, which brings together uh, other relevant uh, researchers. It brings together the college and university um, sector. It brings together the um, Ethnic Minority Educators Group, which is a group of ethnic minority teachers across Scotland, um, and also Action for Children, who have done a bit, a bit of work on creating a charter against racism and religious hatred in our schools um, that is being piloted in, in th three schools in Edinburgh at the moment. Um, so all those people are coming together as an, an education working group to try and form a more detailed charter that can go into schools across the board, and then also to, fund, to create a, um, a research document. Because one of the biggest challenges we have and when I'm asked this question a lot, is how bad is the problem? I don't know the answer to that, is the honest answer. Um, and I think there's some research that needs to be done so we can find out what the extent of the issue is. Um, secondly, what the Muslim community's perception is. But thirdly and equally importantly, it's to find out what the general population's perception is um, as well, because th the biggest challenge, I think, in terms of tackling racism and Islamophobia isn't actually taking on the hate mongers. That, that, that's actually the easy part. So challenging those that have openly racist or Islamophobic views is actually the easy part because you, you condemn them, you don't allow them a platform. The much harder job is those people that have probably an unconscious bias towards people of a certain colour or people of a certain faith is trying to create a dialogue and a conversation where those people recognise 
that perhaps th their own behaviour or their own language isn't appropriate. They reflect on that and they challenge themselves. And, and that's the key part, is how do we get people to challenge themselves? Um, I think that's the only way that we can fundamentally make a difference in society. Thanks very much. Good morning. Uh, first of all, congratulations for bringing people together to, to propose this, this group. Uh, just looking through the list of uh, members, um, I didn't see the Ahmadiyya Muslim community represented uh, in that list. And obviously, one of the highest profile hate crimes that's, that's been in recent years in Scotland was the, the murder of Assad Shah targeted because he was an Ahmadiyya Muslim. I'm just wondering if you've already made that connection with them. Are they involved in the group or, or going to be? Absolutely. So, so there are in, obviously within the Islamic organisations themselves, there's an internal challenge there, which is the CPG is, is not wanting to get involved with. I've made that absolutely clear that it's not for the CPG to define which groups are Muslims or are not Muslims. That is for people to self-define. Um, just like we have made this organisation uh, open to the Jewish community, to the Catholic community, the Protestant community, uh, the Hindu community, the Sikh community, the exact same way it's, it's open to the Ahmadiyya community as well. Um, and, and they are more than welcome to attend and more than welcome to be members. That they've been reached out to? Uh, on, yes, on so basis. I've sent an invitation out to all faith-based okay. organisations. Uh, these are the ones that have responded so far. Great, thank you. Elaine. Which actually leads me quite nicely into the issue that I wanted to ask you about. And thanks for joining us this morning, Anas. Um, it was about the rise in religious hate crimes over the years. And actually, specifically, um, anti-Catholicism is, is more than all other religious hate, religious hate crimes put together. I think it's 58% of hate crimes in the last statistics last year. So I did wonder whether or not you would be looking to to do a piece of work on that with the cross-party group and widen it out. I think you've answered that in a way by saying you've invited other um, religions to come along to the group and have an input. But I wonder if you'd like to just comment further. I think, I th I think the challenge uh, that you have with that is so... Firstly, I think it's important that we get all faiths involved because only if it's done across all faiths and none will, will we be able to get um, action. Secondly, I think there's best practice that can be learnt from other communities who have who have been through similar circumstances. Uh, but one of the challenges I think you have is, and and, and, and people have said this to me, that pr shouldn't we create a cross-party group on, on prejudice and hate in general rather than making it specific to Islamophobia? And the challenge you have with that, I think, is um, if we were to have a cross-party group on, on prejudice and hate, I, I think it's, n it's natural that based on population sizes, there will, be a, there'll be an, a, there will become an order of, of merit or importance or seniority of that. Um, and, I, and I think in that basis, Islamophobia, to be, to be frank, would be quite low in, in the chain um, in terms of, uh, of those different forms of prejudice and hate. And that's why I think having a cross-party group on tackling Islamophobia in its own right, I think, is important. Um, that's not to say that other forms of hate prejudice are, are negated, far from it. Um, but I'm more than happy to work with any faith-based organisations about how we tackle hate and discrimination. And actually, some of the actions that will come from from the cross-party group, some of the policy proposals, for example, I've already put forward to um, the First Minister, impact on all faith groups. It's not just the impact on, on Muslims, impacts on, on all faith groups. And, and I think that's an important piece of work that needs to happen. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming along this morning, Mr Sarwar. Um, the committee will consider whether to approve the cross-party group at agenda item three. And we'll suspend briefly to allow you to leave. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, all the members. Uh, we'll move to agenda item three, and that's for the committee to consider whether to accord recognition to the proposed cross-party group on tackling Islamophobia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So the committee's agreed to approve that. Um, that ends the public part of the meeting, and we'll now move into private session as previously agreed.